Okay. Now, the starter automatically disengages. Now that the starter is disengaged, now you fire generator one up. Take a look at how much power you're drawing. Hey Timber, once again I'm drawing 90 amps. I don't know. He made a change to this before that reduced that. Um, pit out heat is off. My generator's on. Battery fuel pumps. My landing light's on. Okay. Sometimes you'll see that. The landing, I'm still drawing 85 amps. Um, I don't know what to tell you, boss. Anyway, your landing light is right there. Sometimes when you start up in cold and dark, the landing light will be on. There's a, uh, it says so right there. In fact, we'll show you. Landing light. Another thing that will be on is the cargo hook arm will be up. So if you see cargo hook arm in white and landing light on in green, your cargo hook is right here below your autopilot and your landing light is right there on your collective. So that will make those go away. Anyway, what we're looking for here is 28 and a half volts okay, on the left hand side because that's generator one. If we have 28 and a half volts then we're in good shape and we can start up engine number two. Whoa, 282 amps, Timber. What's going on here? I have never seen that. Most I've ever seen before is about half that. So, now that the starter is recentered, generator number two, and there we go, that's much more normal. We're still drawing 80 amps, but now the generators are splitting the load. Now we have stabilization mode and we also have autopilot mode. What we want to do is we want to turn on both the autopilots, which gives us SCHS, which is stabilization mode. Click on that. We go into autopilot mode. Click on that again. We go back to SCAS. But in order to get full control back what you want to do is click on that little gray button or you want to map oh goodness what is it more setup keyboard search keys that one autopilot standby SBY okay so it's a 412 plug-in AP AP standby you want to map that to something or hit the gray key, which that gray key is that one. And if you want, you can map the SAS ATT, which is the ATT button we pushed. Um, I have a speed pad, a game pad set with alt control uh, one through zero and a few other things like alt control semicolon. Nice key combinations, nothing else uses. So I've got like 15 spare buttons for things like this. So, as I said, you know, it's a key combination now that I have for ATT and SCS. And again, I have another button that will uh, simulate that little gray button right there, the one that's below cut cable. So those are important because if you don't hit both of those, then you're not going to get control back. And speaking of control of the collective, there is one other thing joystick safe mode has proved to be essential in being able to get your collective control back after you shut off the autopilot for some strange reason a lot of people are having trouble with this if when you shut the autopilot off your collective still is unresponsive enable joystick safe mode you should be a happy camper birds okay lots of birds so now we are sitting here at a nice little idle. Um, it's warm out today, so I'm not going to bother with the pitot heat. Pitot, pitot, tomato, tomato. Anyhow, 
we now grab the throttle and we ease up being stupid and increasing it too fast has not uh, caused any problems yet but as you can see from the amperage turning red um, timber is modeling more and more into this bird and things may start to explode if you screw up now you want to take this line right here and put it with fly right there this one right here the same thing got a cough again one moment <coughs> now I may be speaking a little louder than uh, you think is necessary my sound is turned up a little bit here let me turn that down but I did check the volume levels before starting the video okay so here we are sitting in the 429 and let me make sure we're still streaming looks good I have had problems with the stream cutting out um, okay a couple interesting things here is as far as the computer goes system um, one of there's electrical schematic you have to go back to system again okay this right here does not work yet um, collective trim cyclic trim or yaw I'm sorry your SCAS inputs they're not functional yet but I'm really looking forward to when they are because one of the things I personally don't like is that we have no idea um, well we have no idea where our trims are you just take a wild guess I mean you know they start centered but if you try to take off with them centered that's not going to be a, a fun time so what we want to do is put in a whole butt load of right hand trim what's a butt load to give you an idea, I'm pushing my right hand trim button. I'm still pushing it. I'm still holding it. I'm still holding it. Okay, now I'm letting go. That's a butt load. And I pull down for about two seconds. Uh, so I have about two seconds of rearward trim and about five seconds of right trim. My stick may not be repeating the key as quickly as, uh, as your equipment, but you know we shall see. Now, at that point, I hit the zero key one, two, three times. So this will help with what will be a left-hand roll when we try to take off. Now, all that said, let's actually get flying. We want to double check that our RPM is at 100. Problem child, it's not at 100. That would be why. There we go. Now we're at 100. On the real aircraft, you do a couple other things real quick. You check your RPM to 104. She bumps up. Back down. Another thing that you do is you go down here to your hydraulic pumps. You f what you do is you check your controls. Okay. Then you fail hydraulic pump number one. Good still have control fail hydraulic pump number two good still have control back to normal there you are so we're going to engage tracker XP it might make you nauseous my apologies if it does I will try to hold my head relatively still alright now let's see what happens here we pull back a little bit on the collective barely enough to get the plane, or I'm sorry, to get the aircraft to start nudging around. What's she going to do? Probably spin to the left a little bit. Yep, there it is. A little more right. Now, pull back slightly on the stick and increase collective just a hair. What we're doing here is a little thing that I call sit up and beg. 
okay, pulling back ever so slightly. And the reason that I do this is because that is about the flight attitude of the aircraft. She doesn't come straight up off the skids. If you try to come straight up off the skids, you're going to lurch forward, which is why she's sliding forward right now. Okay, so sit her up. I'm putting in a little bit. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted to do. Bell 412 plugins. This just lets you see what I'm doing. Collective right here. The higher it goes, the lower it is. It's it's inverted. Okay. Throttle, don't worry about it. It's automatic. It doesn't change as far as I know. Rudder is my pedals. You know, roll, pitch. Those are the main things to worry about. Uh, especially collective. You can watch the collective bounce all over the place. You're constantly adjusting it as you fly. So, here we go. I need a little bit of right rudder. Pull back. Okay, so that's 10% pitch right there. I'm barely even sneezing. Okay, now increase collective to about 40%. And there we go. There's that left I was talking about. Now, of course, I'm not going to be able to hold a steady hover because A, I'm talking to you, and B, you know, people are watching. But hover taxi is one of the most difficult things to do. A hover taxi is what you see when a helicopter is moving along uh, at an airport. Like, basically, what we're doing right now is a hover taxi. Hover taxi should be at roughly three to four feet. I'm probably a bit high right now. Um, but yeah, hover, you don't beat yourself up if you can't do this. A lot of beginners think, oh, I need to learn to fly a helicopter while it's low. Flying a helicopter below about 20 feet is the hard way. Okay, because you've got a lot going on with the ground effect, with that air that is swirling up as it bounces off the ground. You'll notice my radar turning all over the place. Um, and also something, if you look, we're going to pause a sec, but if you look right down here, you will see that this white line is where you're headed, this white diamond. This blue piece is actually your heading bug. This little white one is very important. You don't have this in a fixed wing. You will see it start moving. This is your direction of travel. Remember, a helicopter can move sideways. This one is telling you which way you're facing. This one is telling you which way you're going. All right, very important. I'm going forward. Okay, now I'm going slipping right. You'll see that when you try to hover, this little thing bounces all over the place. And of course, I can't hover nice and smoothly um, when I'm watching the gauges. But, okay, let's re-enable Tracker XP. Now, another thing that I mentioned we would go over is ATL. ATL is if I remember correctly, it's alternative transitional lift. In a nutshell, what happens is this. As air starts moving over the rotor blades, you get more lift without changing your throttle or your collective. So when you're sitting still, that's when you have the least lift and you're sinking the most. Now, I'm not going to touch the collective or the throttle at all. I'm just going to start moving forward. Okay, adding some tail rotor here. You notice we're climbing. We are now climbing at a thousand feet per minute. I have not touched the collective. She's still at 57%. Okay, this is ATL. So if you were to try to fly low to the ground, um, as you speed up, you're going to have to reduce the collective. Now, this is one of the things that people have a hard time with in a helicopter. If they want to go up with a fixed wing, you're accustomed to pulling back on the stick. 